Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I am very privileged to have Miss Mirav Zur. I hope I said that right. Mirav. Yes. Mirav. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. And uh, we're going to have a great conversation today. She is a performer and a director, and um, what else do you do? And producer and writer, and I and I and I'm you know, and I'm a mom, and I can juggle, and I can. <laughs> <laughs> what else <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about yourself um yeah so that's basically i mean what you said is is what i do i'm i'm a creative i love to to create especially in the world of theater uh, like live in person theater that's that's my jam i love it um, i love on screen work too but uh you know that that special magic and, and in person theater with an audience is something else so i really love that and specifically within that, I love comedy. So um, that's mainly what I love to do and what I love to get engrossed in as much as possible. Uh, professionally, personally, it's, yeah, I love it. So how long have you been doing all this? Um, professionally, I've been doing this uh, for almost 20 years, a little over like 18 years, yeah. Oh, so gosh, since you were about one or two? <laughs> uh yeah see it's uh <laughs> nope <laughs> a little bit after but okay i'll take it yes since since then <laughs> so if i read correctly you wrote a musical um, yeah I, I i wrote several um i i've been creating uh productions oh sorry about that That's i've been okay. creating productions for a while for uh years now and I've done everything from children's theater to, uh, you know, like kind of more adult geared uh, musical stuff, uh, music shows that have like, you know, with, with like bands and then like proper, you know, musicals like, you know, what you know and like Broadway, but smaller scale. Um, yeah, all different kinds. So that's, um, that's basically what I've been doing. Uh, my most recent show that I've produced is a solo show, and that's um, the title of it has musical in quotations because it's kind of like I'm not a singer and so some of the musical numbers there that I perform are kind of like somewhat sung, somewhat rap songs, somewhat, you know, it's kind of like a, a different take on musical and obviously I don't have like a whole, you know, barrage of dancers behind me doing a number, it's just me. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's mainly it. Okay, so what's the subject? Because I, I read something about uh, taboo subjects and things like that. So uh, tell me. Yeah, a little so more. this, this particular show is a uh, solo show. It's a comedy about infertility. Okay, now I haven't. So I can't say that I've seen one like that. <laughs> yes, and infertility is definitely not a funny subject. Uh, far yes. from it. Um, it's an autobiographical piece, so it's actually uh, my own infertility experiences that I managed to say uh, through comedy. And so I do it through lots of humor and, and funny songs and silly characters and props and things like that. Um, and it started out with not even being a show. I mean, it started out of kind of my way of finally sharing what I was going through with my friends, which I never spoke about, like mm. through all the years that I was doing that. Um, and it was kind of my way of being able to finally talk about it. And so, you know, then my friend said, hey, you should actually do this, like make it a real show. Mm. And it kind of, you know, from there, it became this thing now and this, uh, this show that actually works as a show, which I didn't think it would. Uh, you know, I thought it was going to be like a one night only premiere type of thing. And I was okay with that. But I was like, okay, you know, I'll do it to kind of prove to myself that I could do a solo show. And it'll be one night and it'll be glorious and that's it. But, but it was, uh, it really resonated with audiences. And, you know, it was something that a lot of people 
were like, wow, I couldn't actually ever say that. And I've experienced it or wow, it's, you know, something that our daughter is going through. We never really knew what she was going through or even, you know, I had like medical professionals in my audience. They're like, oh, you know, our patients, uh, we see patients like this all the time. We didn't really think about it that way. And, you know, like things like that. So it really got me thinking that there's something to pursue here. And, and so kind of like became this mission of mine to have as many people see it as possible because it, it's become this sort of tool for people to, you know, learn and, and, and relate and vent and I don't know, some sort of like weird therapy in a way. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I know it affects some people and it affects them pretty deeply because that, that yes. a couple of friends that uh, they wanted to have children and were not able to, and eventually they just split. And it was sad because they seemed like such a lovely couple together. And, yeah. and I mean, I have three children, but we lost five before my daughter was born. And uh, of course, you know, I mean, I'm fertile, but we were having these problems. And that is something that's kind of hard to talk about. I mean, it, I, that was the first time I, that really broke down. And I mean, just I lost it. I, I, honestly, the first time we, we lost a child and, um, I mean, can you kind of tell what it is that you talk about that can help people? Sure. Um, you know, it, those experiences, it's just, um, unfortunately, so they're very common, but ironically, they're not talked about at all. So the people that are experiencing them, including me, like you feel like this complete, you know, kind of freak of nature that you're the only one in the world that has d gone through this and it's a shame and it's bad and it's, you know, uh, weird and whatever it is, it, you know, the guilt, every, every, every possible emotion that can go with it goes with it. And it's completely consuming and heavy and, um, and on the one hand, of course, why would you want to talk about it? Because it's so consuming and heavy and, and, you know, but um, you know, it, it's, it's there and it's something that I think um, should be talked about more because um, it, it, so much more could be done and so many people could be, could get help and at least n not feel as alone. Um, you know, even things like, you know, these experiences, miscarriages, it's about one out of every pregnant, uh, one out of every four pregnancies. That's mm -hmm. a lot. Um, infertility is one out of every six, uh, in many countries in the U S it's one out of every eight couples trying and that's statistics, meaning that's people that have actually gone into the information. There are a lot of people that haven't gone into that pool of information. So it's probably a bigger statistic, but you know, it's, it's just odd that there's so many people going through it and not a lot is being talked about in, in, in the sense of, you know, coverage, uh, you know, financial coverage, um, medical yeah. coverage, um, just being more aware at work, you know, bosses should be more aware of their employees, employees should be more aware, you know, it's, it just causes, um, it brings up a lot of issues and um, nuances in real life that we should look at, like, you know, wow, uh, people are going through stuff. And even besides infertility, it just makes you realize that everyone's got their baggage and just just that is a default that we should work with to be like okay let's just be a bit more empathetic toward each other let's be yeah. a bit more understanding and kind because everyone's got their stuff going on let's let's let that be and you know and, and be accepting and you know to answer your question what what should people do i think people that are going through it first of all, need to know that they're not alone, which is, I know, easier said than done, but, but they're not alone. And especially now there are, you know, digitally, at least there are so many avenues to reach out and, and connect with other people going through this. Um, not to mention, of course, in person and, and finding the community to get that support. It's so crucial because the emotional toll of this whole thing is, is horrendous. And, you know, to the people that are, you know, what should we do that, that are not going through it, but know someone, because statistically, everyone is either going through it or know someone. It's just, yeah. that's the statistic. 
Um, you know, it's just just to be there and be aware. Uh, you know, I have this thing in, in the show that I, I do this little song of what not to say <laughs> to people who are trying to conceive because there's so many, you know, well-meaning yet completely tactless pieces of advice that <laughs> people tend to automatically say. And it comes from a really good place, of course, but it ends up being just like, why are you saying this now? It's not helpful, you know? So, um, and, and you know, and it comes from a good place of someone, you know, someone tells you a problem, you immediately want to help fix it. So, it, you know, it comes from there, I get it, but it just ends up being very ridiculous, you know? But um, so, you know, I had, the song is, is funny, but it's there to kind of show, hey, you know, just be there. That's all, sometimes that's all you have to do is just be there, listen, offer help if ever they need it, you know, and it can come in many forms, you know, just to listen, have a cup of coffee, uh, you know, understand if you, you know, have this event with your kids that maybe someone experiencing infertility doesn't want to show up to, you know, it's things like that. Um, just, just that empathy and understanding that, hey, it's okay if, you know, someone you know is going through something that you don't understand, but just understand that, yeah. understand that. <laughs> So I'm guilty of I always want to help people and I want to give my advice, but it, 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 it's difficult as it is. You, you should ask before you right. give any advice because sometimes people just want to vent. They just want to right. hear. They don't want you to give them any advice. Just, just listen. Right. You should take more time to do that. Right. Right. And, you know, and, and on, on the flip side, you know, trying to, to connect with people that have, you know, others that have gone through it is actually great because, you know, there's all this information suddenly that you have access to mm -hmm. because if someone else had gone through something and then they're like, oh, well, you know, um, I, I went to, to that, I tried that and, you know, did this work, this didn't work, or, you know, maybe you should, you know, these providers are, you know, very caring and these are not, or, you know, things like little tips and, you know, from anything, like the weirdest thing, so sometimes it is helpful to to get advice, but it just depends, you know, where and when and 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 how it's done. Uh, but I think um, that the value people really underestimate the value of just being present with someone. Yes, it, it just mean it means a lot. So yeah. But if you don't mind me asking, where where did you go? Um, where did I go for help? Mm -hmm. I didn't. You and didn't? <laughs> it was and it was not good <laughs> um yeah so like um you know i was doing all this you know like you know acting and producing and all this fun creative stuff professionally and um personally you know my husband and i were going through all this stuff and um it was just and because i felt so like out of the ordinary like no one else is going through this obviously i'm the only one in the world obviously you know I didn't, I didn't want to talk about it with anyone because no one would be able to help me because it's, it's an unknown thing. Like no one talks about it. It doesn't exist. So what would, you know, I'm not going to talk about it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You know, and I told my husband don't talk about it and all the other emotions, you know, tied to it, like the shame and the guilt and all that. So I just didn't want to talk about it. My husband actually really wanted me to, but I just didn't. And I guess I just wasn't ready to even figure out how, and, you know, and if it, I guess I thought it was not going to be helpful, but um, just a few years ago, we had experienced yet another miscarriage and, and I said, yeah, and, and that one was a, a heavy one. And I said, yeah, maybe, maybe now I'm ready to talk about it, but I just didn't know how. And then I, I came up with the idea of like, okay, I'm just going to invite my friends over and, and tell it to them through comedy. Like how, else? cause I can't even tell it to them. Like, like I'm talking to you now, I'll just start bawling and crying. It'll be, it's too, it's too heavy, you know? So I invited them over. They didn't know what they were coming for. I said, just come over for some cookies and whatever. And we'll talk. And they were like, okay, you know, and they came over and I, and I just like, you know, spilled all the, all the beans on everything that, you know, I was going through, but I did it like through humor because it was the only way I was able to even, you know, get the words out. And then that's how it started. And then the the funny thing was, I, I just thought it was going to be that thing. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm telling you now, I'm never having to talk about this again. Now you know, and you can leave. And basically that's what I thought would happen. But they didn't leave and they just started, it, it brought up a bunch of stuff that they had experienced similarly. And I was like, what? Like, 
we're a room full of friends that, you know, and we don't really know all the details of each other, like what? And that got me thinking, like people don't really know stuff that's going on. And, and that really got me intrigued. And then when my friend said, you have to make this into a real show, I was like, yeah, okay. And, and I did, it took me about a year to kind of, you know, write and, and get it together. Um, but yeah, once I did that show and I saw that it, it, there was something more that one night, yeah, it, there's something there. It's something in that, in that topic that people just don't want to touch, but it needs to be, you know, a bit more talked about a bit more openly. Do you know of any organizations that someone that might be watching this or listening to this may be able to go to? Um, yeah. So in the U S um, there are, first of all, there are many organizations um, that are, uh, you know, helping, whether it's finding whatever path to parenthood is suitable for, for people, which also no one really talks about, you know, it's not, there's not only one linear path to parenthood, which we all were taught and conditioned to learn, you know, like, okay, it's just, you know, a man and a woman and there's a baby. Like, it's not like that anymore. Like there's, you know, different ways to become a family. Um, and so there are many organizations that help with that in the U.S. Uh, especially. Um, there's, you know, a national organization to help with that uh, called Resolve. Um, but there are many, um, you know, local places that could also help. And the easiest way is even, you know, asking like uh, regular like OBGYN that, you know, the like health providers they know and google is great with also finding uh, places and um there is a big um it's called an infertility community um uh, big one online especially on instagram and you could just you know search hashtag infertility community and you'll reach tons of you know people that are offering information and support and uh it's just it's great there are a lot of people actually opening up like anonymous accounts on Instagram just to kind of document their own journey or vent or get support. And it's a great, it's, it's actually a great way because if you don't want to go to a group or, you know, in any way be identified or, you know, whatever it is, it's still an outlet um, and it's great. So there's, there are those options. And of course, you, you know, people can connect with me. I'm very uh, open now. I'm very open and I talk about it and I'm, you know, very responsive and I love you know, I think it's one of the big benefits of the show is I've gotten to meet so many people and hear all these stories, amazing stories of, you know, all this craziness. I'd offer to give mine away, but they're all in their 20s and I don't think you might take them. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and it, you know, and it's funny because, you know, it's, like I, I have also a bit in the show that I do about, you know, sex ed, it's like the things we learned in school was, you know, later on you find out like for many, many, many people that was their initial main source of information. Um, and it was completely lacking <laughs> in what you needed to know and all you needed to know. And it was just like, you know, mind boggling that, wow, we don't really know the things we need to know. And, and more importantly for self-advocacy, um, you know, a lot, the human body is not, you know, we're not cookie cutter humans True. and everyone has their own thing that they need to kind of, you know, they, they have to check what, what they want to check and, and with who they want to work with. And so self-advocacy is super important and the main, you know, power here is information and knowledge yeah i'm sure you'd probably talk about surrogates and adoption and things like that too right um well in the show specifically i talk about my own experiences so mm -hmm. it was um i did i did not go through that but um i do touch upon that because those are topics that are again not talked about you know a lot of people mm -hmm. and, and even me when i was deep in it I did not even know about those options. And I think that is like, it's such a shame because, you know, a lot of people are probably like that. They, they don't even think those are viable options. They don't even know what their viable options are. Um, 
until they're really down in the muck and like really trying. And, and I always say, it's like, why can't we just have a pamphlet? Just tell us, you know, what are, you know, what's going to happen? What can we do? What, you know, what do we need to know? Um, but yeah, that's why it's, it's important now to kind of do it for yourself. And it's like, you know, get, get the information, get the support because it's there. Yeah. So let's, let, let's talk more about your, your improv and, and yeah. uh, everything that you do. So, um, what, uh, what other big projects have you done? So, um, I think the, the biggest project I, I, I've done was, you know, my very first play that I wrote, um, was initially something that I, I did because when I started out, I started as an actor and, um, you know, in that world, you kind of have to be at the mercy of whatever production is there if there is one to get a job and then you go from job to job you have to go to an audition and then hopefully pass that audition and then hopefully there isn't another one and then, <laughs> then you get the job and then you know um and at right at the beginning i said wow okay this is i get it i get this is how it is but i would prefer to create my own opportunities instead of waiting on possibly getting you know someone else's uh, idea of, of whatever i need to be so i created a, a play and um and it was successful. And I saw that there was kind of this niche that I could work with. And I ended up creating an entire uh, mobile theater. So it was kind of like this traveling theater. Um, it was in Israel at the time when I was living. Uh, and I lived there for many years. And, and it was, uh, you know, this thing that I didn't even think was also going to be anything more than that play, but it kind of, you know, uh, had its own inertia. Um, and it was great. It's, it, it taught me a lot. And, and then, then, you know, out of what I needed to, you know, it, it, I needed to be, I needed to have a producer. So I became a producer. I needed to have a director. I became the director, you know, I, I became the, the driver and the marketer and the, <laughs> the costume designer and all this. A lot of hats. <laughs> yeah. And until, you know, until I was fortunate enough to meet the, the, the people that, could help me and, and work with me in those fields and, and knew what they were doing. And, you know, I can get them to work and, and collaborate with me, but it's, um, it, it, I really liked that fact that I got to dabble in everything because it got me to see different perspectives of everything and definitely understand and appreciate the whole process of what it takes to get an idea to, to the stage. You think more people that get into acting and stuff should go through all of those before they really get into it? Yes. I think everyone that's going into the field of entertainment should dabble in all the parts, even the ones they think are completely boring or hard or whatever. And I really also think that every person should study theater uh, just like we study math and science and history and, and sports are given a lot of, uh, you know, uh, importance. I think theater is really important because it's um, a great way to learn about life. Theater has many parallels to life, whether you're working to get a show up on stage and it takes, you know, the entire village, the, you know, the whole team to get to get it going and teamwork and, and everything. Uh, but also the the pieces themselves, you know, the content, um, you know, theater has a great way, you know, it, at its root, it's there to tell a story, but it also has a great way of um, showing us the parallels of life. So like you kind of understand, you know, you're, you're working on, on a character, you're, you're working on, on the human, on the, and, you know, the whole way a, a person works and why do they do the things they do and why do they make the choices they make and it really makes you understand yourself and people in your life um and it's and it's great and within theater uh, one of the parts i love a lot is improv improvisation um because it's it's also a great tool to use for life it's mm -hmm. like one of the founding, um, you know, principles of improv is it's called yes and. So it basically means that whatever is presented to you on stage, uh, you should go along with. So like if you know your fellow actor comes on stage and is like, um, "Hey, can you hand me that glass of water?" and you're like, "There's no water here. It's just us on stage." Then you know you pretty much killed the scene. <laughs> 
Whereas if you went along with it, like said yes, and went along with it and said, yeah, sure, do you want me to hold pour the whole thing? I mean, you know, I only have one bottle at this picnic. And then suddenly you're, oh, okay, I see where we are here, you know, and you, you evolve. And that's also the and, the and is the, the addition, like that picnic part that I added. It's like, what, what can you contribute to make the scene go forward? So it's just like that in real life. Like if you're presented with something, are you gonna go with it and say yes in a way? Or are you gonna negate it and stop it? And then you're, you have blocked that, whatever opportunity that could have been. And if you did take that opportunity, what are you gonna add to it and contribute so that it continues to kind of like, you know, move forward. So it's just like, you know, it's just like why we are here, right? Like one of us connected with the other and the other said yes, and the other said and, and, and then we're here talking. So I, <laughs> I just love that it's very useful for real life. This must have been fate because I, I actually did a pilot for a reality show. It was a few years ago and that was easy because I mean, just go out and you're yourself. Right. Um, of course, some people can't act natural on camera, but yeah. we're, we're goofballs, so it was no big deal. But it it didn't make it, and now I just got a part in an indie film, and so that that starts next year. I'm, I haven't done anything professional like that. Everything's always been you know plays and things, but uh, I, you know I don't I don't know. I, do I continue to try to act as normal as possible as like it's just me? I mean the, the part is basically what I do in life anyway. So, uh, I mean, I need advice. I need advice. Yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> you, do, you do you. I mean, if that's, you got the part, maybe that's how you got it and why you got it. And if you well, it didn't help, be, um, and, it didn't hurt that I'm friends with the director. So <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure that that's why that, you know, you were in mind. I mean, they could, you know, there's a million people out there that they could have chosen. So I think that if you, you know, first of all, go with your gut and say, and, you know, do the yes, like you're going, like you are. And I'm sure that if the director wants something else, then, you know, they would, they would say, but um, I think that's awesome. I think that's, you know, that's a great way to kind of go with the flow and look how, you know, this opportunity is there. And then, you know, you never know what's going to happen when you're, when you're doing it and who you're going to meet there. And then what that leads to, it's, it's awesome. Well, even if this is the only thing I do, it's still, I mean, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. The, the the whole time we did the reality show, I mean, it was three days straight of nothing but filming. You know, I, even though we didn't make it, the experience was something that I'll take with me forever. And I, I learned a very valuable lesson. Make sure you turn your mic off before you go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really funny story about that. Um, <laughs> But first, yeah, I want to say that's one of the most important things, I think, I mean, in general in life, right, like what we what the point of everything is, is to, you know, live and learn, like to learn and to improve and grow. So what you're saying is so true. It's like it doesn't it you're not doing something for the purpose of whatever it might be you're doing it to do it to yes, and move forward at that point in time. And and learning whatever you're learning is awesome even if it's learning to turn your mic off before you go to the bathroom which is great <laughs> i have uh one of the um one of the cast members and one of my shows was telling us that um he had he had gone to a public uh, bathroom and he was in the stall and there were other people there in the stalls of course and all of a sudden um his um his gps was still on on his phone and all of a sudden <laughs> you have reached your destination <laughs> like out loud <laughs> and then he was just, he didn't even know what to do with that and everyone knew it was coming from his stall and it was just you know so funny <laughs> you've done it you've reached your yeah destination. like out of nowhere it's just hilarious <laughs> well for me the practice is is I, I do these shows all the time and I, you know, I have no problem being on camera i'm not shy whatsoever uh, um I, I do have my moments where i get nervous get tongue-tied sometimes my stuttering will come back my brain works faster than my mouth does um i just 
want to encourage people, whether it's that or anything, just go out and do it. Even if you fall flat on your face the first time, just keep trying. Totally. Yeah. It's like, I always say Nike really knew what they were doing when they came up with the just do it slogan. Cause it's so true. It's like, and just do it is the yes concept too. It's just like, just go for it. Just say yes. And, you know, of course there's a little caveat, you know, if someone's offering you crystal math, no, you don't say yes, but like, you know, with common sense, but it's, you know, the main, the main gist of things is kind of try to go with the, with the flow because it, it will be okay. It will lead to, you know, inevitably good things that are, you know, you, you have no idea that you can expect. Even, you know, like I was telling you with this show that I did, like, I did not even think that anything would happen. And, you know, with it, I thought it was going to be this one thing, but I kept on saying yes in a way, um, you know, that first minute that I decided to finally, uh, you know, speak about this thing that I never talked about. And, you know, it's, it's just been, you know, amazing. So I, I really think that the whole yes concept, I thoroughly believe in it. And I think it's, it's important. It's important to try. It's an important skill to kind of figure out how to use. Mm -hmm. Keep, keep going and keep going. Yep. Eventually, keep going. It, eventually you could be successful. Yeah. You know, you've heard the story of formula 409, right? No. You know why they call it formula 409? Is it the is it the 409th attempt? It was is the that... 409th time that it finally wow. worked. Oh, I love that. Oh, wow. I love that. Okay. That's so good. So and and here's another thing. Okay. I have done just about every job under the sun. Um, most of my career I worked for the city. I worked in the water department, the sewer department. And, and tried lots of different things. You know, I, I was even an Amway salesman at one time, <laughs> the whole nine yards. And I always had this dream that I, one, I wanted to be a, a comic book artist or a, a radio DJ, this, these kind of things. And unfortunately that they, they didn't happen, but they also led to other opportunities. And here I am doing something that I really love to do. And I mean, I'm, I'm just like right on the edge of being very, very successful at this. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Maybe what you set out to do isn't what you end up doing, but it may be what you really enjoy. Yep. Yep. And, and, you know, and you, and you, you never know like the path that you think you take or you should take is not necessarily the path you end up taking, but not necessarily the wrong path, <laughs> you know? So it's, yeah. uh, it, it's like you said, just keep going. Mm. Um, do you have anybody in your life that you can say has been that, that inspiration that helped you to, to do what you want to do? Um, I have to say that uh, my husband has been like, I mean, I can't even, I can't even describe, but it's, really like so much support. And then, um, you know, we, we have a daughter and she's been like, you know, everything she's like, it's, it, it just, it's like, you know, I learn from being a mom and also I learned from her and, you know, and the whole, you know, everything is just, I think that's what kind of is, maybe the ultimate drive, you know, I think that's, that's the, the, the big drive. Well, do you have a website? Yes. Um, so my own website is um, www.mayrobzor.com. So it's M-E-I-R-E-V-Z-U-R.com. And there is a bunch of stuff that I've, you know, little bits of stuff that I've done and, and um, you know, um, my social media connections there and you can contact me through there and everything. Um, and on social media, also you can find me, I'm more active on this, these accounts that I created for my uh, recent solo show, which is inconceivable show in one word. And that's on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and clubhouse and all the, all the places except for Twitter, which is inconceivable because <laughs> there wasn't enough room. I agree with you. I had a Twitter account for a while, but number one, they're, they're so strict on there with people that don't have the 
right opinions. Yeah. And um, people would get so nasty on there. Well, people can get nasty in a lot of places on well, social media. I think yeah, that's the real ugly part of it, which is a shame because it does have a lot of good things. I mean, it does let people connect and everything, but you know, that whole, that whole thing of, of the bad is just, yeah, it's not great, but yeah, yeah that could be anywhere. You just have to kind of block it. <laughs> well, I, I think people need to realize that Twitter is not the real world because oh, when you get on there true, as is true with all social media right like it's it's not the real world it's kind of this uh weird highlight reel even if you can even call it a highlight reel it's it's like these weird snippets like if you were to travel back in time from the far future people would be like what's happening or from the past like they'd be like what is this <laughs> <laughs> well, you know when you get on twitter and some of these other social media sites, you, you would think that everybody hates each other and all this, but that's not what I see when I go to the grocery store. You know, people seem to get along and we have great conversations and my neighbor doesn't hate me like Twitter wants me to think they do. Yeah, well, you know, and it's also um, it, it's it's that setup. It's very easy to be hateful to something that is not real and tangible on in front of your face. I mean, it's just, you know, when you're on text and you're, you know, yourself, you're hidden and you're anonymous and no one, and, and you're far away. Um, yeah, it's very easy for people to be nasty. When you see someone in front of you and you can feel like, you know, the basically their energy and what, and you see what they're doing and you can look into their eyes and see if they're like, you know, uh, like a, just a human soul. It, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be a different, you know, a different thing. So of course that's, that's the, the bad part of it. Yeah. I, I love the fact that I can meet a total stranger at the store. It could be one little thing that you find in common. And the next thing you know, you're having a 30 minute conversation with this person you just met. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Not that's like, I think the, the power of, of, you know, the, the human, species that we kind of take for granted you, human connection we that's what we're geared for yeah it, we're hardwired for that and mm -hmm. and the fact that um you know it unfortunately we're in a lot of uh spaces where it's easy to fall and not do that um it just takes away it's you know it's the whole thing with you know with the vices in general like kids you see yeah. that are that don't know how really to communicate with humans because they're they're you know stuck they don't even know you know i i also run uh, workshops for theater and 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 improv and things for people that are not experienced with it even kids and i often find that the most mind blowing thing is when i do a simple exercise of like eye contact mm -hmm. and to them it's like they just discovered like this <laughs> this new like this whole new world it's like oh what you know because uh -huh. when you have eye contact it's this whole thing and they're not used to it they don't do it so you know it's it's really interesting <laughs> do, do you ever work with children maybe they have autism or something like that um i have i have worked with uh children like that were in you know in my group because it, my the groups that i've done i never limited it and i've also also um uh integrated different ages sometimes in, in the group so i never and i never knew uh mm -hmm. in advance because i never asked I, it didn't matter to me i was like whatever you know we're all we're all together i don't need you know your backstory we're good um <laughs> and in retrospect parents would tell me and and then that's how i learned uh but i i never um you know i i had very very little experience with uh you know uh, like just the entire group being a certain, you know, like uh, autism or, or any kind of uh, thing like that. Um, other disabilities I've had experiences with, and it's, you know, it's interesting that when you don't focus on it and you focus on what you're there to do and having fun and learning, it's it, then all of that other stuff becomes irrelevant and, mm -hmm. you know, you and you do what you're there to do. And nothing else, you know, no one cares about what you did last week and what your grades are and what your religion is and your race and your all the stuff that, you know, no one cares about that. We're here to just do the work. We're just here to, you know, have fun. And then you can really dig into 
getting the benefit of being with a lot of different kinds of people because you set all that other stuff aside and then you can really uh you know indulge in that it's like it's it's awesome yeah my my wife has a cousin who's uh he's mentally handicapped but um i'm still extremely smart and very hard worker and everything but when i first met him and my, my wife was like, it seemed like she was being really ugly with him. I'm like, how, how can you act like that? She says, I, I just treat him like I would anybody else. And they, he, it's like, he gets it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and he, it, it's almost as if he doesn't have a disability at all when you, when you talk to him. And yeah. it's why I think it's important. You treat everybody the same. Yeah. Irregardless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then, and then you don't have that whole issue of, of whatever it is. There's, there is no, you know, this race versus that race and, and, and man versus woman and, you know, all that it's, we're, we're pretty much, we're all the same. We're all the same. It's just, it's so hard to get that message out there. Like it's, we have mm -hmm. to, you know, and, and, and I get, of course, that, you know, at, at this point in time, yes, there are groups of people that, you know, throughout history, have been dealt horrible, uh, you know, the horrible hand and the horrible end of the stick. But I think that when, you know, especially with theater, when we're there to do the work of whatever it is we're doing mm -hmm. in the moment. And I think that, you know, that is also true. Like we have to just understand that we're here to do the work together and we're here to, to do whatever it is we are together. And that's how we're moving forward together. And that's, you know, and so that's important. Well, and, and to me quality is equal opportunity criticism too so if you do something wrong you should be open to the criticism i, I mean i screw up all the time i always yeah. welcome anybody to get in the comments if they see that something that i'm done i've done that's you know i'm a, i should be wearing a dunce cap for um tell me yeah you know, I, that that's how i improve right right yeah i mean there's a difference between you know like uh uh, you know this uh, this criticism versus sheer hateful comments, but but yeah, oh yeah, it's uh, constructive criticism is always welcome. I mean that's that's what you need to do. Nothing is going to be perfect. So that's how we're going to learn. We're we're going to have to make mistakes in order to learn, and that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's and that's right. yeah, and that's another thing with with theater. It's like the safe space of making mistakes in a way. Also, when you're in that. Um, obviously in the, in the exercise and rehearsal stage um but even in shows that's that's what improv comes in handy for it's okay to make a mistake because we got you back you know like that's what that's what you're there for it's like oh you messed up your line i'll help you with something you know i'll, I'll pick up that prop that fell and i'll make it look like it was always planned to be that way you know that's how it is uh, um i'm pretty sure you're familiar with the wizard of oz yeah but I did not realize how much underlying uh, themes there were in the Wizard of Oz and the part where they're um, they're coming upon the Tin Man. But when they they cross the trees, the apple trees, and they're picking the, the apples and then they come to life and they start throwing the apples at them. That actually represents how like the world will throw insults at you. And instead of running away, you actually pick pick that criticism up. You kind of nourish on it, and it helps you to to grow as a person. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, uh, and, and by the way, I knew I made it when I had somebody tell me that I was a a sucker of a a, a male chicken. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't say the word, but you yes, kind of get the gist that was of it. <laughs> That's a very, uh, a very, very nice way of saying it. <laughs> but uh, you know, exactly when somebody says something like that, that just makes me work that much harder. And I, don't take it to heart. People right. are you're going to find nasty people in life. Period. Right. Take and, whatever and, they can throw at you. And again, and and in the theater world, the 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 cool part of that is that you end up learning you know about that person and why they said that line like mm -hmm. why why did they make that choice and you end up learning really quickly that it comes from usually a place of fear or a place of mm -hmm. you know um you know their own issues that they're you know 
kind of deflecting on uh, unloading on other people um you know the the how people make their choices and why it's just it's so helpful to know and then you're just like oh okay so it doesn't bother me because it wasn't me yes. it was you know yeah sometimes it's jealousy and sometimes yeah and there are reasons for that you know it's like people do what they do for many many reasons and whatever you know that those set of circumstances are but uh once you understand that that's how things work it just makes things a bit more you know a bit easier to to get it and kind of be like oh okay and you don't have to be in that you know kind of like what what did i do or you know why <laughs> so do you have any projects coming up um well right now i'm i'm actually i've i've started because i always have these things that i'm like oh wait that would be a good show and like you know and i start writing so i i already have kind of um this idea for for a new a new project to work on but i'm really trying to uh, focus mainly on um, inconceivable on my uh, solo show because i really want to get it out there to as many people as possible um i was you know i i had been performing it quite a bit and then the pandemic hit and it really shut down everything obviously in person um i did make a switch to virtual uh, but of course, it's not the same as in person performances. And so now it, it seems like hopefully it's kind of getting back to something. So I'm trying to, you know, um, uh, book some shows at least this summer and hopefully kind of get back into it. Because I really, really think that it's something that could help a lot of people, if you know, in many different ways uh, to see. So, yeah, that's that's my main focus. And I'm also hopefully I will be able to get it streamed on a streaming platform as well, like Netflix or something. That's like my dream to do that. Uh, so I'm hopefully going to be able to do that as well. So. Ah, but have you thought about doing it maybe on Facebook live or something? Um, yes, but I, but I think it won't be the same as, you know, doing it uh, streamed. I want to do like a proper kind of looking like a comedy special type of thing. Gotcha. That would be awesome. And then it's actually like a real in-person show, but also filmed and then it could be streamed. And that's kind of like, you know, that would be great. So, um, so when yeah. you, when you do get back out there and performing again, can, can you let me know so yes. I can share that out on social media? And, yes. Uh, thank you. I will. Of course. And of course, you know, information on how to get tickets and where you're going to be yeah. all that stuff. I'd love yeah, to share definitely. that with everybody. Oh, thank you so much. But, um, thank you for coming on and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank and you so much for having me. Oh yeah. Anytime. If you have something else that you'd like to promote, please come back. We'd love to Oh, we'll do. Thank you. Thanks so much. Anytime. You, you have my contacts, so just just get a hold of me and uh we'll we'll get you back on. Will do. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So all of you out there, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you come back and please subscribe. For those of you who are regular to the channel, thank you for your support. And so until the next one. Everyone, please take care, be kind to one another, God bless, and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.